my fellow Americans, it is time to take our freedom back. going on guys heck yeah the weather changed all of a sudden it's cold we all got coats on except for john john's <laughs> raving in the t-shirt here man he's tougher than i was wearing my coat until i got in here it's not so, but outside yeah, i was watching like, the intro i see lonnie in shorts on the intro i'm like i remember when it was real hot just like that now yeah, yeah. like a uh, day before out. yesterday yeah, i know yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yesterday <laughs> in the summer, yeah. Out there, yeah. crazy it's good well, i love turns it fast yeah well today we have uh mark baird coming on the show he's our he's our resident uh constitutional scholar so we always enjoy getting him on here and uh he's got a a a lawsuit going against california and and uh so he's coming on today to talk about give us an update on that and just some of the other stuff going on so welcome mark Mark. hey mark thanks for having me on how you guys doing today great good another good day to be alive Uh, every day is a blessing isn't it yes sir this summer blessings in other ways. That's all in different ways. But I, uh, I hope I had hoped you guys would have me on today. And thank you very much for giving me some time. My cat's trying to bite me off to the side here. Um, I sued the state of California, as you probably know, for the ban on the Second Amendment. And they banned the Second Amendment legislatively starting in 1968. And then they finished the job in 2012 and 2013. And uh, so I was a little, I was too young to know any better in 68. So it kind of took me a while to come around to this, but I decided to do something about it. And we just uh, passed another milestone. We uh, deposed the state's expert witness, who was a police chief in uh, Covina, California. And he is fully on board with banning the Second Amendment. He thinks that people have the right to self-defense. They just don't have the right to exercise it. And, and that's really what this is about, because when we started this nation, we started with the concept of natural rights. And those are rights given by God to individuals and their individual liberties. And then out of a, an argument between the Federalists and the Anti-Federalists, those enumerated rights or inalienable rights were codified in that pesky little document called the Bill of Rights. And those were added to the Constitution after it was ratified. And and we now have those and we enjoy those liberties, at least we used to. But those liberties have been replaced by a really evil concept that um, government is using. And believe me, it's not just Democratic governments, it's Republican governments as well. And that is called the God of public policy. So even though you enjoy individual rights and you have those rights codified in the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, the First Amendment, uh, speech, freedom, press, uh, the right to assemble and the right to petition the government for redress of grievances and the Second Amendment, the right to keep and bear arms and on through the Tenth Amendment, the governments now use this concept called public policy to deny your rights. And one thing that Police Chief Rainey was very clear to say Yes, he knows we have the right to self-defense, but he believes it's bad public policy. And in his 39 years in law enforcement, he never, ever granted permission to a citizen in his jurisdiction to exercise the Second Amendment by bearing arms. And I find those concepts so dangerous that um, they just defy description. They're absolutely evil. And this guy doesn't think he's evil. He uh, thinks he's an honorable man. But his admission is this. Yes, uh, and I and our attorney asked him this. He, he said, um, do you believe that people have the right to self-defense? He said, oh, yes, I do. She said, do you believe that that right is to protect yourself in the event of a, a possibly fatal or uh, an attack that would cause you great bodily harm? Said, oh, yes, I do believe in that. He says, do you believe that that right is limited to the home? And then Chief Rainey paused. And she asked him, um, do you know what the Second Amendment says? Well, he says it's something about keep and bear arms. 
And she said, do you, did you swear an oath to uphold the Constitution? Oh, yes, I did. I did. And she said, well, so then what is the Second Amendment to the Constitution? Well, I couldn't quote it to you, he says, but it's something about keep and bear arms. And she says, do you th- what is the definition of bear arms? And Chief Rainey answered, well, it's something about you can get a gun and you can have one in your house. And so then my attorney asked him, do you believe that the right of self-defense is confined to the home? And he said, well, no. And she said, do you believe the right of self-defense attaches to the individual? Yes, I do, he said. Do you believe the right to self-defense attaches to the individual no matter where they happen to be at the time? Inside the house, outside the house, across the state, in another state? He said, well, yes, I guess I do. So then why have you never issued a concealed carry permit to any of your citizens aside from political figures and district attorneys and retired police officers? And he said, well, because it's bad public policy. She said, do you believe that if, let's say, a woman were in a parking lot at a grocery store and she were attacked, she was attacked, by a well a determined attacker who meant to either kill her or injure her tremendously do you believe it would be a benefit to that person to have a weapon to defend themselves a firearm oh yeah i would probably be a benefit in that case he says well then why don't you support the right to keep and bear arms well because it might be an individual benefit to the person who's about to die he says but it's bad public policy and I'm curious to know what you guys think about that statement. That sounds he like somebody who's afraid to get sued. Because it's bad public policy. I don't even understand public policy. I mean, that's made up of the individual rights, right? I mean, I don't understand no. what he's even referencing. No. I, 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 I think what's happened, here, here's my take real quick, is that we've begun to legislate based on the fact that nobody wants to get sued. So everything that they pass, all these policies, mandates, whatever they might want to call them, are simply to avoid one thing, and that's getting taken Liability over. driven. That's, that's liability. Right. And that's all right. they want. That's why I say that, you know, attorneys have unfortunately ruined, mm-hmm. you know, policy in this country because mm-hmm. of that, you know, and, and I guarantee that police chief is going, hey, you know what, yeah, it's a pretty good idea to have people carry arms, but the second somebody kills somebody, now it's going to come down on me. Yeah, and because my job, he issued like, that absolutely. permit. Yeah. Did you background check the person? What's I'm not Did saying? you do all those right steps to... Yeah, but if you do all the right steps, it's it's protected in the Constitution, so they would right. lose the case. Oh, Absolutely. That's, I don't understand. How, how could they possibly? Here's what the chief said, and and this is pretty interesting. So see see if you can grasp this because I had trouble with it. It it made me angry the instant that I heard it. He said that the people in my jurisdiction have the right to feel safe, and if they saw people carrying firearms, the rest of the people would not feel safe. So even though the people who are prohibited from carrying weapons in a very high crime area, what's now a very high crime area, it wasn't when he was chief, but it is now certainly, they don't have the right to be safe because he wants other people to have the right to feel safe. And that's where his public policy is based upon. It's based upon, and and mind you, a chief of police is an appointed official. No one elected him. He's appointed by a city manager who is also an appointed official. So you have two layers of people who are not responsible to the voters and they're setting policy that could affect your ability to to preserve your own life and the lives of your children and protect your community and the life maybe even of a stranger that you could intervene in the attack. And you're being prohibited from that because the chief who isn't elected is afraid that people in his jurisdiction wouldn't feel safe if they thought you had a weapon. Basically, that's what our sheriff, at least the past sheriff, has said up here is the reason why he won't issue open carry because he says it would make people nervous and it would make his officers nervous. And, uh, you know, to me, I, I'd much rather see you who has a gun. Well, exactly. And I think how many states, do you know, Mark, how many states allow open carry? It's it's the majority. with a, 45 states. 45. So... I mean, if your officers would be nervous, man, how about if we send your officers to one of the other 45 states and sure. get some training, you know, because sure. I'm like you, Carlos, I'd, I'd just soon, if I was a, a cop, I'd just soon see who was armed around me. You know? Well, and I think it has to do with what culture's done. They've demonized guns. 
is like the, you know, the worst of all violence. <laughs> and it was just a joke to me, like, you know, like in Chico, I remember one year it was the, the PD guys actually made a shirt. I visited Chico. All I left with was this lousy stab wound. Yeah. Cause by March we had 30 something stabbings. Wow. Sure. So I'm, I'm just like, you know, so you took the guns off these people and then when violence is going to do an increase and, and you have a you bad the match, away, it'd be something then, else. You, then you're going to, we were chasing stabbing victims, following yeah. blood trails to find them in the bushes. I mean, that was <laughs> sure. in Chico. Sure. So you have where it's already what you Mark is fighting for has already gone through, mm -hmm. you know, and it doesn't, it didn't help. Sure. It's not, it's, that's, it's just a, it's a chasing a red herring in my mind. I, I want to ask a question. Is there a difference between feeling safe and being safe? I'm just saying because difference. let's 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 just be. I had a guinea pig when I was a little kid. I don't know why, but I had this fat little guinea pig, and they will go and they will go and put their freaking head into a, like hide it in something. And they think they're safe, and <laughs> yeah. their whole body like and the everything's ostrich. exposed. Yeah. I'm just yeah. saying that's what this reminds that's me of. Just because, because you know I can't see you. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. let's yeah. get out of this me. whole safe. Yeah. I mean, we yeah. we've tried gun free zones. What what happens when you have a gun free zone? People see it as an easy target. Why does why is it always that somebody goes sure. and does a mass shooting in a gun free zone because there's nobody there? And if you look at people that the more open carry, the more pro gun, the more people that have concealed carry, the more they're always the safest places. And the places like Chicago who have the most draconian uh, gun laws and where there you can't have a concealed carry and you can't do this, and you can't do that, you can't buy ammo. Look at it. They're always the most dangerous places. So Inspire. I'm just saying we need to like we need to just get the facts straight. Two plus two equals four, sure. you know? And and every time more law abiding citizens have firearms, the, the community is safer. Yeah. And and we need to look yeah. at that versus what some deranged people who got brainwashed in college or, or watching all the, the Hollywood bullshit. Um, excuse my language, but I mean we, we need to differentiate between what's makes you feel safe Let's and what facts. makes you safe. Just yeah. facts. Yeah. Now, Mark, I have a question for you, Mark. Is a CCW constitutional or is a constitutional thing to just allow me to carry without a CCW? Why do I need a sheriff's permission to exercise my right under the Constitution? Well, you need a sheriff's permission because it's good public policy. It's certainly not constitutional. <laughs> okay. Exactly. I mean, yeah. Uh, from the founding of this nation and before, and, and John Locke said it, and William Blackstone said it, and Marcus Cicero said it 2,000 years ago, people have the absolute right, the unalienable right, a right which was given them by their maker, a right which no one can take away unless you give it away, to defend yourself, your property, and your family, and, and arguably your community without giving way. In other words, without having to retreat from violent uh, behavior, you have the absolute right to defend yourself. No one said whether you carry it under your raincoat or on top of your raincoat. And, and you know, by the way, in, in my time as a peace officer, we define concealed uh, with mens rea. In other words, if you had a guilty conscience, then you could have something that was concealed. Well, what's it concealed from? It's It conceals you from arrest. In other words, a, a drug addict conceals his heroin by shoving it down his underwear. Sure. But if you're wearing your gun and it starts to rain and you put on your raincoat, are you concealing your gun or are you just keeping dry? And so the, the term concealed was invented. In California, it was invented in 1861 to uh, keep uh, uh, people from carrying guns that, that everyone couldn't see. And it was repealed in 1869 because they realized that only law-abiding people followed the law. Sure. And then that. in 19, 1917, a cowardly sheriff in Los Angeles claimed to the legislature that Pancho Villa and his men were, were stuffing guns down their pants and sneaking into Los Angeles in order to murder people in their beds. And that was an absolute and total lie. But concealed carry passed in 1917, and it was never repealed after that. And so, um, to me, if you carry, you carry. But, you know, that's the way it is. And so, I, I find this to be um, extremely devious and evil to tell people that they can't carry because someone they never met don't know, and you can't verify, by the way, may not feel safe. In other words, when I'm walking down the street, how the heck do I know who feels safe and who doesn't feel safe? I know when I'm walking in certain parts of town, if I'm down in, in Los Angeles or Chicago or New York, 
I don't feel safe. But the only thing that would make me feel safe is knowing I could be safe because I had a gun. Sure, exactly. But I don't know what the people around me think. And should I conduct my life based on the fact whether they feel safe? I mean, maybe most people are just paranoid schizophrenics now and they're never going to feel safe. Sure. That's the way, that's yeah. the way it seems. And hey, Mark, real quick, um, we kind of went about this backwards a little bit, but w- tell the audience what exactly your lawsuit that you brought against California was or is. Okay. The, um, uh, the uh, suit against California is because they banned the Second Amendment legislatively, in, and that was in 1968. The open carry of a loaded weapon was banned because of the Black Panther demonstration in Sacramento. Um, and uh, so they banned the Second Amendment through Penal Code 25850, and that is an absolute ban on the carry of weapons in California. And so you can't do that. And now Penal Code 26350 and 26400 in 2012 and 2013 um, banned the open carry of an unloaded weapon. And so now you have no ability to carry. Uh, There are exceptions to the law. So first of all, the law is absolute. You may not carry a weapon exposed or concealed, either loaded or unloaded in the state of California. Uh, And so... The exceptions are Penal Code 26150 and 150 B2 and 155 and 155 B2. Those are the concealed weapons permits and the open carry permits. Now, we'll we'll talk about open carry first. The sheriff, no sheriff in California has ever issued an open carry permit, never ever in the in the entirety of the program since 2012 and 2013. That's never happened. Mm-hmm. And the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals ha- has ruled that concealed carry is not a right. It's a permission, and states can ban it. They can regulate it. They can charge a million dollars for it. They can say you have to have just cause. They can do whatever they want, and you won't be able to do it unless you get their permission. Some sheriffs will issue concealed carry permits, and some sheriffs won't. But you're dependent upon a single state actor with no right of appeal in order to get a concealed carry permit. Now, in California right now, are there any counties that are allowing open carry? Because the way I understand it, if you have under 200,000 people in your county, the sheriff can make that determination, correct? If you have under 200,000 people in your county, the sheriff can make that determination based in your county only. It's only good in your county. You can't carry in any other county. And uh, no sheriff in any county under 200,000 has ever given out one of those permits either. Okay. And again, that's bad policy liability, et cetera, et cetera, whatever reason. That's, well, yeah, it's public, po- it's good public policy. <laughs> yeah, according. Sure. That is just so, I don't know. Uh, how do you control someone's feelings? I mean, they might be not feel safe because of my jacket, because I wear camo, which means I might be a- okay. carrying a weapon. Camo you know? is scary. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's just, if we chase that, we're just going to be lost. And I think that's what we're seeing now with a lot of California policy, because that's what we're trying to chase down. And we're not just going back to the rights and within the Constitution. I mean, that guy's answer was pathetic. He couldn't even quote what he was anti. He couldn't yeah. even tell you what was he, in the Second Amendment. He, he doesn't know. even know what... Well, I think, actually, I think that was a lie. I think he knows very well the difference between keeping a gun yeah. and bearing a gun. Oh, sure. I mean, everybody knows that bear means carry. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and he's certainly not a stupid man. He may be an evil man, but he's not stupid. Yeah. So, and I think this feel safe thing was contrived by the progressives as an excuse to change anything they don't like and limit anything they don't like and control you and take your rights away. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's mm-hmm. obvious that the feelings are subjective. Um, and and I, I postulate to you that on any given day, when you walk into Costco or Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever you're going, that 90% of the people around you walking back and forth their cars aren't thinking about whether they feel safe or not. They're thinking about loading their car or whether they need uh, two boxes of nails or one or, or where they're going to go eat afterwards. But they're not, they're not walking around saying, oh, my gosh, if I saw a gun, I wouldn't feel safe. Yeah, and I, I, no. I was a peace officer. I saw guns all the time. I, I didn't feel one way or the other about it. I mean, that's besides that, that's kind of a cop's job to be able to tell the good guys from the bad guys. And if you can't do that job, maybe you should work at McDonald's. And there would be a, there'd be an adjustment. People would have to get used to seeing 
arms again all over the place, and it would be okay. And they go, right. oh, that's safe. Conditioning no, goes there's... both ways. It doesn't yeah. be good and even bad. I mean, yeah. I think we need to be reconditioned to what's normal. And if we're all armed, and to me, that that's that's the safest society, former society that we can have. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be a, a big, tough thing like the sheriff's making it out to be because your dispatchers would – would catch a lot of that. And, and if people called in, Hey, I just saw a guy walking into Walmart with a gun, you know, the dispatcher say, Oh, just so you know, that's, that's legal in this County. Sure. Everything's fine. You don't need to, I mean, that would go away. You could have some ad campaigns and oh yeah, it would take six months quickly. Yeah. Six months. It would be adjusted. Yeah. hundred percent. I mean, I I remember the whole, okay, let's go back to the mask thing. Right. When masks first started getting worn, I was like, Oh shit. People wear masks. Yeah. Now I couldn't tell you who's wearing one and who doesn't. Like if you asked me, hey, was a cashier at Walmart wearing one? I'd be like, I didn't even notice. You yeah. Know? <laughs> <laughs> right? It, it, it works both ways, you know? So after a while, I think we would just De- even notice. To it or, yeah. yeah. It the thing about normal. the kids that are super young, you know, this yeah. is just like totally normal for them. Kids that yeah. have been doing this sure. for almost two years. Yeah. Say they're six years old. And they've been doing it since they were four. I mean, oh, yeah. it's but, just but it's new... all part of the same program yeah. where we're playing to the lowest common denominator. You know, we're, we're actually playing to the lowest form or yeah. person in society, the person that's the weakest, you know, where yeah. that never works. You know, you don't play <laughs> to the weakest person. You don't, no. you don't play to the weakest player. Well, no. you use that word, like, you know, if you're, if you're always catering to the lowest functioning person in the yeah. room, well, yeah. if you're catering to the person that's scared of their own shadow, well, mm-hmm. then we're not. <laughs> They'll leave our houses yeah. pretty soon. Darren you know, talked about that when he was yep. here. You know, yep, yeah, so. the, lo- the lowest functioning. Well, what, Mark? Well, I, I live on the border. I live on the border of an open carry state, Oregon. Even though they're sliding down the slop shoot faster probably than we are, but they still have open carry, and I see it all the time in Oregon. Yeah, I mean, you don't. Not every person is doing it, but when I go into Home Depot or something like that, or we go to the grocery up store up there, Winco and stuff like that, to do big shopping all the time, and. You know, you'll see an open carrier, um, uh, one or two every time I go up there and no one cares. No one comments about it. No one says anything. And in fact, in California for more than two centuries, right up until 1968 and even let's say 2013, because, uh, you know, after loaded open carry was banned, I still open carry with the magazine on my other hip, I mean, or in my pocket or something. And for 200 years, open carry of a weapon was absolutely unregulated and largely unremarkable. You could walk right into the governor's office, openly carrying your horse pistol, and nobody said a word. And and so my theory is this. No one was ever afraid of the weapon. Uh, the legislators in Sacramento were afraid of the Black Panthers, and I, you know, which was kind of a funny deal, but no one got hurt, no one got shot, and they all got arrested later for conspiracy. Conspiracy to what? Because what they were doing on that day was absolutely legal. They didn't threaten anyone. No one brandished. No one fired a shot. No one was hurt. But they were arrested later for conspiracy because the idea of political opposition absolutely scared the heck out of everybody in that building in Sacramento. And they punished all of us because of it, because they said, we'll show you what happens when you show up to this Capitol building to petition this government for redress of grievances. Same and thing. They same thing. Our Second Amendment. Yes. It, same thing that happened January six. Pretty much. You know. You you you're absolutely right, Woody, and that should chill everyone to the bone. We should be very very afraid of what this government is capable of because we've seen what they can do and what they will do. Yeah. So and where what they where will does, do? Where does your lawsuit go from here? How are you feeling about it right now? You know what? I I have to say, I, I'm not a big fan of the courts, and I, I was a cop for a long time, and, and I've seen courts do some pretty horrendous things with liberty and, and I join you in uh, that. <laughs> and letting crooks go and all that stuff. But I got to say, I feel good about this one, and here's why. The New York Rifle and Pistol Association case, the oral arguments were last week, and I listened to those arguments. Oh, I don't know. I probably listened to them 10 times all the way through because I didn't want to miss anything. I've got 35 pages of notes on those oral arguments alone. And here's the way I see this. New York has a permitting scheme very, very similar to Californians. Californians, in fact, it's almost identical to Californians. That is where you're geographically limited. In some places, you might get a permit, but probably not. In, In some places, you might get a permit, maybe. And those are more rural areas. 
uh, but you can't leave town with your gun. You can't do this with your gun. You can't do that with your gun. Um, you can even be restricted to, you can only take your gun to the gun range and back, but you can't get it out for any other purpose. You can't wear it. It's got to be locked up. It's, it's a lot like California is. And there were five justices that I counted that absolutely hammered the New York State Solicitor General because the New York Rifle and Pistol Association sued them to, uh, to get rid of that permitting scheme. And there were five judges that absolutely hammered the state of New York over the unconstitutionality of depriving their citizens of the right to bear arms. You know, they, the question is not, can we get a gun? The question is, can we carry the gun, how, where, when, and why? And all of the justices agreed that it is not acceptable to deny people the ability to carry arms for the defense of themselves. And several justices, uh, the New York Solicitor General, fortunately, she was an idiot and a boob. And uh, she said things like, well, you know, and, and Chief Rainey said this, by the way. Now, in, in coastal and urban California, he said, we can't possibly uh, allow people to carry firearms. We can't, uh, we, unelected officials, can't allow that. Uh, now, I can see in counties north of Fresno, you know, the rural counties, where they might be more used to it up there. Because, you know, you're country bumpkins and you don't have souls, so you might be able to carry a weapon and not absolutely lose your, your junk over it. But in coastal California, we can't allow that. And so in New York, they say the same thing. Well, Justice Roberts, who is considered kind of a swing vote, he really jumped around that. He said, well, so you mean to tell me that you're more likely to be carjacked on a forest trail in upstate New York? And she said, well, you know, there are wild creatures there. And he said, well, are you more likely to be raped on a forest trail in upstate New York or, or in Manhattan? And she could not answer his question. And then uh, Justice uh, um, Kavanaugh said, well, what about what about on the subway? And she said, well, we have subway police for that. Now, none of the justices jumped on that and said the government has no duty to protect. But they did say that, well, yeah, but most of the weapons on the subway are in the hands of criminals and the subway police aren't there when you need them. Didn't Roberts, justice, didn't uh, Roberts, that was Kavanaugh. Oh, didn't Roberts even say, why are we even having this discussion about a constitutional yeah. right too? I was, he, I was he, shocked. He did. And in fact, Justice Kagan, who's a screaming liberal, said, I said, I find it contradictory that the Second Amendment is the only amendment that requires the permission of the government. She said, I find that contradictory. And that was Justice Kagan. And she is wow. a communist if there ever was one. And Justice <laughs> Alito said, well, you're forgetting about the poor guy that works at night and he's got to walk home at two o'clock in the morning through the streets of New York. You're forgetting about that guy. And we can't we can't leave him. No, I've never thought about it in those terms, actually. Uh, and I'm yeah. being honest. I've never thought about it in those terms where what if one county said, hey, I'm going to restrict your speech. But if you go to this county, then you can say these words and in this county. You can say that but you can only say it during these times. You can only take your words over here. And they have done it on college campuses. You know, now they have free well, speech zones where spaces, you can only right. go there to speak. Sure. Right. Well, that's, that's good public policy because, you know, people might feel like your speech is hate speech. And so if you're yeah. behind the gym in the parking lot where no one can hear it, mm -hmm. then, you know, you might have hate speech, but no one is affected by it. Yeah. You know, it's the same with your, your uh, weapons permit. So, so what they proposed that you could exercise the Second Amendment clear up to the county line, but the minute you step over it, you're a felon. Mm -hmm. I mean, or you're on your way to the store and, and I'll go even further. When I'm on my way to the store in Oregon, what am I supposed to do? Hide my gun in the bushes until I get back to California? I mean, these things are just ridiculous, and they're they're so far away from the liberty that this country was founded to to guarantee. Because you have to ask yourself, why why do we even have a government? Why bother? Well, government was formed for one purpose, one purpose only: secure the rights of the governed. Yeah, and that and and that in order to do that, it requires the consent of the governed. And when government fails in this objective, it is our right and our responsibility to abolish or reform that government whenever the public good demands it. So what has happened here is government formed to secure our rights has become the entity that's taken them away. And I think that this New York case will settle in favor of the Second Amendment. But here's the open question. How far will the Supreme Court go?
I don't think they have the courage to abolish permitting altogether. I just don't think I, I that's what I would advocate for. You don't need permission to exercise a right. And if it is a right, in fact, there is no permission. And if you require permission, it isn't a right. I don't sure. think they'll go that far. But what I think they'll do, and this is just a guess on my part, I think they will uh, abolish the May issue part of a permit and make it shall issue mm -hmm. so that anybody that applies and then jumps through all the hoops and pays the money gets one. Um, that isn't great. It isn't perfect, but it's a real good start. What about and the open carry part? That's that's what I mean, because the California legislature has instructed the uh, the Department of Justice to create an open carry permit and sheriffs are to issue those permits whenever they want to. But if the New York case makes it a shall issue permit, okay. they will have to issue the permit to anyone who asks for it and passes the background check. So we will have open carry in California. You might still have to apply for a permit, but then. If they don't strike the geographical restrictions or the population restrictions, that means I could get one in Siskiyou County, but you couldn't get one in uh, in Los Angeles County or, or uh, Contra Costa County, say. So those will fall as well. So we will have open carry in the state of California. You may have to get a permit. And here's what the state will do. It'll try to make that permit so difficult to get and so much trouble and so much money that no one will want one. Mm -hmm. But there's a point of attack as well. And then we could get the permit abolished. But I yeah. think we will end up with open carry in California maybe as early as June or July of next year, if I can afford to pay for the case. Well, well thank you awesome. for so doing how, that. How can people help? We're, we're just about out of time, but how can people help uh, put this thing forward? Is there anything they can do, anything they can Yes, contribute? absolutely there is. And let me uh, give you the address to do that. Um, you, can, you can help me out by sending a check to uh, Pecan. And I'm trying to write that into my phone because I don't memorize addresses. I always do it wrong. Um, P-E-C-A-N. Let's see what that comes up with. Yeah. Um, 14421 Old Oregon Trail in Reading. And that's 96003. 14421 Old Oregon Trail, Reading, California. 96003. Make the check out to Pecan, P E C A N, like the nut. And in the in the line where you say what you're writing the check uh, for, write two A, just write two A, because that way the the 501 C three knows which case to attribute that check to. And we there's no paid staff, there's no anything. One hundred percent of the money goes to pay the lawyers. And I just got a nine thousand dollar lawyer bill day before yesterday. That's great. So um, we'll make sure that our producers go ahead and put that on the screen, you know, when we put this thing out. And yeah, yeah I appreciate it, Mark. Thanks for all the information. Hey, uh, thanks for fighting coming, with you. Mark. And let, let's check touch. back in here in the next week or two. We'll check back in with you and, and see how the progress is going. Thanks, no, Mark. I love that. Thank you, guys. God all bless right. you all. And Merry Christmas to Merry everybody. Christmas. God bless Thank you. you sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. All right.